Welcome back to another Old versus New. This one's going to be talking about a couple of interesting figures, because it's just the nature of the character. So I finally got the new Studio Series Crosshairs. Uh, even though other people that got a stolen copy from China have had it for about half a year, I just found it at retail. So, uh, yeah, really do like this guy. Then over here is... Oh, oh, well, uh, my bad. Uh, over here is the Last Night Premiere Edition... Uh, crosshairs. I actually got sent this in the P.O. box, and you may notice there's a couple little things different. I uh, did a little bit of kit bashing, so full disclaimer. Uh, this is kind of comparing the general molds. This is the Last Night Crosshairs with the Age of Extinction hands, guns, and head. Everything else is the Last Night Crosshairs. I just felt like it looked so much better with this head with the darker color on it and uh, having black hands just looked so much better. And my last night one didn't come with any guns. So, yeah, it's going to be a not 100% accurate old versus new, but hey, we're talking about the general molds here. You can kind of get the gist. My channel has never been the channel where you're going to get the exact transformations and every single little feature they can do, this, that, and the other. I don't even look at the instructions, man. I, that's just how I roll. <laughs> I get so many people pushing up their glasses like, um, actually, and I, I'm just like, yeah, I do what I do, man. We're talking about the old one versus the new one. It's just kind of reminiscing, going back and kind of seeing, you know, how was the old one? How does it stack up? And with crosshairs, like I said, uh, the nature of this character is just the car is going to be on his back. <laughs> That's just the nature of the character. That is what we're looking at here. Uh, because basically the character design has a uh, quote unquote trench coat and how toy designers interpret that is, oh, the trench coat is the entire car hanging off his back. That's just how they interpret it. However, uh, that's kind of the only way you can interpret it. Looking at this robot mode, there's not a lot of the car pieces you could really integrate into the bot mode, except like maybe the front of the skirt, which both of these have done. There goes his guns. Uh, I kind of put these on weird. You'll, you'll see how. You know, kind of some of that. This one integrates more of the car into the robot. For sure, because that's some on the shoulders, the skirting, some of the arm, uh, and like by the ankles and the feet. Uh, those are all the car bits integrated into the robot. Uh, the car bits integrated into the robot on this one, literally just these front panels and the wheels. Uh, that's it. Everything else is back here. This is the car, and this is a little bit of the car left behind. The entire robot just folds up inside the car. This guy is an absolute definition of a shell former. Uh, Crosshairs, by nature, is just going to be a panel-y, shell former -y guy. That's just the nature of the character and the nature of these toys. So I'm going to start this video by saying if you don't like panel shell former type figures, if you don't like having figures with the entire car hanging off their back, both of these are easy passes. Easy, easy passes. You just do not want... A toy of crosshairs in your life. You, you just don't <laughs> because you're not going to like it unless you don't want to transform it. And even then, uh, the robot modes on these have, have their quirks. But let's get into it. Let's talk about the old one first. Uh, so you can see this is a, a remold of the Age of Extinction one, just slightly modified mostly for the vehicle mode, and it fixed a couple key issues that I'll go into. But basically, this is mostly the last night one with a couple Age of Extinction parts. And uh, not just with my kit bashes, but that's just how it was designed. And it's a pretty decent figure. This one definitely had more color than the Age of Extinction one, uh, except for the head and the hands, which is why I did that little swap there. But zooming in, I do like the head sculpt, but I always felt like it looked a little off. Something about it. Like, this is pretty much, you know, the, the, the same head sculpt used for both figures. It was just a difference of paint. Uh, it never looked 100%, and that's definitely something I think the Studio Series succeeds in. Uh, the shoulders, you know, you can see they kind of get in the way. He's got this little tiny body. Really tiny body. <laughs> but, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty neat. I do like him still. I do like him. Uh, you can see a lot of the cars hanging off the back. They did change one thing where uh, 
a panel. I think the hood flips in for the Last Night version, but it did not for the Age of Extinction. It just kind of dangled down. Another thing for Age of Extinction, it had, uh, like, you can see his hand right there. It had, like, this big, weird panel that was, like, moving past his hand, and it looked very bad. Another horrid thing on the original a Age of Extinction copy was, uh, like, rubber hosing that, like, it wasn't even hosing. It was, like, weird rubber flaps uh, that like, folded over and, like, tabbed into the torso, and they just looked hideous. They were unpainted. They, they were bad. Uh, now they're replaced with plastic flaps that look so much better, and they're painted, and they, they like, you can see, look, it still has the whole trench coat thing going. You can move them out of the way to move the legs forward. You know, it's it still looks pretty decent. Uh, however, you still have the issue of, you know, it's just a lot of stuff hanging off of them, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's just a lot of stuff. I would say, like, you know, the sculpt is a little weak because it does share a lot of Age of Extinction sculpt, and that line wasn't really known for the best sculpts. But it's still still pretty decent, you know? They were able to upgrade a lot of things, and I appreciate that. Uh, you know, the articulation you can kind of see here. He's got a nice knee bend. Uh, his ankles can move. They don't really have a, a pivot, though, but they can move forward and back. His arms have this really nice double joint, which uh, you can see a lot of articulation there. Uh, he does have these little tiny guns, which I forget exactly where you can store these. But then again, these are the Age of Extinction guns. I'm actually not sure if the Last Night version came with these or not. So we'll just leave these off. Because the Age of Extinction one, notably, only came with one of his primary guns. Like, these are the main guns he used, and the Age of Extinction toy only came with one. Which is very odd. I think, don't quote me, I think the Last Night version, like, the proper accessories came with two. But I do believe... I don't know if they changed this. I know you were able to store these on the inside on the Age of Extinction version, but I think here you could store the Last Knight's weapons, which I do not have. Uh, so you can have weapon storage in there, I just don't have the proper guns, which is okay. I'm not worried about that. Not too worried, because uh, I think the fate of this figure is, uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see, I'll tell you later. Uh, but yeah. I do like the look of it. I, I actually really do. I like the skirting a lot. I really think that's a major upgrade from the Age of Extinction one. It just looks nice. And I do think this head swap really benefits this version. Sure, the green doesn't match 100%, but pff, who cares? Who cares? It's a toy. It's painted green and green plastic. You know, Hasbro doesn't match that half the time anyway. But yeah, you know, articulation, pretty decent. You know, he's got some decent shoulders. Uh... Keep in mind how nice he can point the gun outward like this, but also keep in mind how little he can turn the head. Uh, you know, bicep, already showed the elbow, swivel at the wrist. Uh, legs are on ball joints. He's got swivels and nice hinge there. Yeah, he's got pretty good articulation. He's a nice figure. I really do enjoy this one. It's not perfect. You know, it's not perfect, but I still do like it. It still definitely has a place in my collection. Like, this is not one I'm going to get rid of. I, I still do enjoy this mold. And here is the Studio Series one. Uh, right away, I do want to say that, like, visually, just looking at this, the silhouette, the sculpt, and everything, this looks a lot better in robot mode. Like, from the front, it looks a lot better. The skirt is less kind of in the way. Uh, and awesomely, it can get out of the way. Like, it has two different hinges to, like, move out of the way for articulation. This head sculpt is really nice. That is crosshairs right there. That is a very good head sculpt. That that is that is good. Could have used a little bit more gray paints in the torso, but you know I think they did a pretty good job with the budget because a lot of paint had to go back here. A lot of paint. Uh, you know the skirting looks nice again. Has a little bit of green there. I do appreciate that actually being a part of the car in the front. I do appreciate that. Uh, moving these out of the way. You can see his legs are pretty basic, but I think they look pretty good. And it actually looks nice with these out of the way, too, if you want to display it like that. Because uh, for, like, uh, the articulation, you're going to want those fully off to the side. Because you will not be able to properly articulate them all the way with that forward. Like, you can have some casual leg motion with, you know, that hinge there. But if you move it all the way, that's going to get untabbed. Uh, speaking of untabbing, this is one of those figures that if you find it used at any point, uh, expect a couple pieces to just not be there. 
Uh, these could easily, you know, fall off and not be there on a used copy. So keep that in mind because that is a part of the alt mode that will ruin the toy. The spoiler, uh, it just it comes off. Uh, that is actually a piece after this review I'm just going to glue in because I feel like it should have been glued in, but it wasn't glued in and it just it just comes out like no effort. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're shopping for this years down the road. Uh, that likely will not be there. Uh, <laughs> you might have noticed, oh, where's his guns? He actually has some nice weapon storage back here. Uh, you can kind of see, like, on this additional part of the trench coat, I guess. You know, he can kind of... He can't really draw them, because they're, like, behind the coat. But he does come with two of his proper guns. Which is, yet again, for me, another reason why I think this one is going to be displayed in robot mode. Because this one is just very, very nice with the guns. Like, that just looks really cool. Like, that, it's that's him. That's him, you know? He's he's doing the shooty shoots. There goes the spoiler. Can't wait to glue that on. I'm just going to leave this off because it's going to fall off again for the transformation and the articulation segments. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's crosshairs. It looks pretty good. I do have to say articulation in some ways is actually better on the old one. So the head is still on a ball joint on this one. So you can, you know, rotate it. You definitely get more rotation with this, but because of his, like, trench coat collar, it's still going to get in the way. The shoulders are on butterfly joints, oddly enough, kind of partly for transformation, but they also benefit, you know, articulation in general. It is actually a way to get him with, like, a cool, like, cross-gun pose with those butterflies. Like, you can get him with some cool poses. Like, in the thumbnail, if you look, I've got him crossing his arms. It does work really nice. Uh, the ball joints on the shoulders, because these big old parts of the shoulders, like I pointed out, you can get them pointing really nice and straight on the older figure. On the new one, it's going to like f the trench coat and things that start clashing and getting in the way. And yeah, you know, he's kind of always going to have his shoulders down a little bit when he's posing with a gun. Uh, it's just, It seems like that's just the nature of it. Uh, you already saw how those move out of the way. Only a single joint at the elbow. Nothing at, at the wrist for rotation because they flip in. Uh, legs are on ball joints. Nice double knee. Uh, it's kind of for transformation, but you get a very nice double knee. And then the feet are on ball joints and then also on like super pivots. They're on super pivots. So you can, you can get them really doing the splits. But keep in mind that trench coat is not going to allow them to do it. So yeah, another thing too, so much of the car is on the back on this one because it uses so much less of the alt mode. Like almost all of this was integrated into the robot mode on the old figure, and it's just not here. It's just not. So you have these big extra panels you have to deal with. Uh, it's uh, it's crosshairs. You know, that's just the nature of the beast, I think. Uh, he's always just going to have tons of, of car mode bits just sticking off of him. But as a fan of the character... You know, I love John DiMaggio. I think he did a great job voicing him. And, you know, I I think it's just a cool character. I'd like to see more of him. I'd like to see a legacy version of him. Like a g one ified movie crosshairs. That'd be sweet. Uh, but yeah, you know, looking at both of these, I think one, in some ways, is a fundamentally, like, better integrated Transformer. But the other just looks so much more accurate to the film. So... In the robot mode, it's kind of a toss-up, what you really value. Because Crosshairs is never going to be a perfect figure. That's just the nature of the character. This is the Transformer with the car hanging off his back. That is what Crosshairs is. You know, so would you want one with more car in the robot, or would you want one that's a little more accurate to the movie? Because I think on one hand, the Last Night one is a little bit more articulated, and still has some nice looks to it. While the Studio Series 1 just looks like he does in the movie, and it looks really good. I mean, with Studio Series, if you're not a not a stranger to, like, customizing your figures and adding a little bit more paint, adding more silvers and blacks and things to the Studio Series 1, it would look insane in the robot mode. It would look so good. So, robot mode's kind of a toss-up. Me, personally, I think I prefer the Studio Series in bot mode just because... That is my mind's eye of crosshairs. I've always loved his robot design. And sure, it has a lot of, you know, car on the back. But the way I see it, you know, seeing this on the shelf and everything, this is the crosshairs that I want. So, let's get into transforming these. 
So let's set Studio Series in the back there in his cool pose. And the guns we will just entirely omit because these are the wrong guns for the figure. We're just not talking about those. And let's get to it. So the arms, you can already see just like straightening them up real quick. You can see they're forming a part of the car. So that's, that's something very nice. Uh, the legs, they're kind of going to fold up and kind of integrate like this. And a little tibby tab together for the feet. And then with the back, flip this big old panel. Because I think with the Age of Extinction one, that would not flip. But now it flips, so that's much better. I love the sparkly clear plastic they used. That looks so nice. I wish they'd do that more. Like, it's not necessarily accurate, right, to a car. But it just looks cool as a toy. I just think it looks neat. We're almost done. We are seriously almost done. We're getting there. Uh, so the shoulders are going to shift up and straighten a little bit more. And then this big old shell is just basically going to come up on him. And then you just have to worry about tabbing everything together. You do have to make sure these panels are flipped in. The panels that were in the front of the skirt. Gotta make sure those are flipped. Then this is the fun part. Straightening and tabbing everything together. Because he's... It's crosshairs. He's covered in panels. He's covered in flaps. And uh, this is just the nature of the figure. Uh, this is the thing that they improved with the last night version. Basically, this section of the car was still a part of the hand. So it had like that much panel just behind the hand there. And it limited the articulation, and it just didn't look any good. But I think so far, this is looking pretty good. Just got to get this tabbed in there. There we go. It is on the other side. Get this flipped down. Almost there. Almost there. And here we go. Here is the Last Night Crosshairs in his absolutely awesome vehicle mode. This is the reason why I really decided to do like the kit bash and have the Last Night body. Was because this, th this upgraded vehicle just looks so nice. One thing too, the Age of Extinction one was missing half of the black striping on one side. It was just straight up missing it. It was just a general factory error, what have you. It just wasn't there. It looked awful. So this alt mode is amazing, and I love it. Flipping it over, you can see it's basically just the figure straightened up with his feet folded in and all the car just folding around him. He is a shell former. But it's crosshairs. That's what he is. This figure, for me, I'm pretty sure this is the figure I am going to keep in vehicle mode. Because uh, this car just looks so nice. I don't think I could get rid of this. This car is just too cool. And one thing I do, uh, I see that hole right there. I put, like, push pins, and I, like, stick a push pin in my shelf or something. And I just, like, put it in a hole in the figure, and then I just hang it up on the shelf. So this guy will probably join, like, Age of Extinction Drift... And a few other figures just hanging up in vehicle mode. Because I like the vehicle. Alright. So there is the Age of Extinction one. And let's do the Studio Series. Oh boy. <laughs> this one's not too hard. But I've said it many times. Uh, Studio Series Autobots are just a pain. They're just absolutely a pain. Because they're so small. And they have so many moving parts. I feel like Crosshairs kind of gets out a little easy. Because, you know, he's a lot of the parts are like massive panels that get shifted and moved around in massive motions. But like right here, I'm trying to flip this. By the way, this ball joint where this panel connects to the back, you need to tab in like out of the box. Such a pain. Such a pain getting that tabbed in. It's doable. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I guess I'll show you that it's doable. Ugh, you can see this hinge, it's on a hinge. So you gotta like keep it straight and push it in. Okay, it's in. You can see it's like stressing some of the clear plastic. Oh man, oh geez. This, this guy is riddled with clear plastic. So if, again, if you don't like clear plastic, keep that in mind with this guy because all of this is clear plastic. All of it. Every single bit. Okay. 
So then we can see we've got a big chunk of the car right here. Keep in mind, I have that off. I highly advise gluing this on because this is going to fall off in the transformation. It will not survive. Okay, what's next? Let's do the feet. So the legs, oh, there goes that. <laughs> there goes that. Uh, so I'm getting that back in. Like I said, this guy has some parts that are, you know, not going to stay on him. So if you're buying them used, keep it in mind. So these parts, these panels, we'll want to flip out of the way because then the legs are going to collapse in on themselves. And the feet are going to do a little flip me do and go like this because these little tabs sticking out are going to tab into the car. All right. All right. So I got the feet situated. Got the skirting kind of situated. And then the skirting is going to contribute to the car when we fold this. Ah, oh, geez. Gotta get the arms kind of tucked underneath, underneath too. They kind of rotate, and then they're gonna tab in, but we'll save that for like the last part. So, we'll get these panels kind of fed through. You can see this is not as, uh, as easy as the original. And then these tabs right here, there's like a hole in there where we gotta figure out. We gotta like get everything squished. Oh, I forgot, there's a hinge here. Cause that, you need to get the legs just back a little bit further. Okay. And then, almost, almost. Oh geez, is it lining up with the hole? It's, it's not. Needs to go down just a little bit more. There we go. Maybe it's easier to like do one at a time. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And get the legs kind of in there. Ooh, <clears throat> not even there yet. Not even there. <laughs> so then these big old side panels will tab in. I do have to say these side panels tabbing in is easier than on the original. That is definitely easier. And then this panel just flips down, double hinges and connects and then the arms there's like little slots in there we're gonna get those slotted in and they just kind of go in I'm so proud of myself that I figured out how to do this without instructions I'm so proud and then this we'll want to have tabbed in and then just make sure you glue that in because that is a nightmare and that's stupid it was disconnected for me in the package I could have almost thrown it out if I wasn't paying enough attention so here's the studio series version of the car and honestly, pretty much looks just as good as, as this one. I think they both look pretty nice. They're very similar size. I do say I kind of prefer the original's green. It just has more of like a, I don't know, like a foresty tone to it. But I love the shade of green. You can see the Studio Series one does add a little bit of paint right there. Adds a little bit of paint for the, the logo right there. You can't actually see his head poking out just a little bit. You can see like all of his scopes and everything. But yeah, overall they're both very solid in the in the vehicle mode. They're very nice. Both of them have the red tail lights. Yeah, they're, they're both really cool figures, man. Again, it's crosshairs, so you have to accept that all of this car that you see is just hanging on his back. But looking at the uh, Studio Series one. Like flipping it over, there is more of a transformation that happened with the robot mode. Like it's so funny, even though more of the car is integrated with this, I feel like more happened with the robot mode on this one instead of just the panels around it. So again, you know, kind of keep in mind, you know, what you value in Transformers toys. And again, if you value figures that aren't made of tons of panels and don't have the car hanging off, then don't buy either of these. But if you just like crosshairs, if you like Transformers toys in general and accept them for their oddities and quirks and moments like this where the cars are sticking off, if I'm going to recommend one to you, I would recommend the Studio Series. Per usual, Studio Series is one of the best Transformers lines ever made. It's just straight up. They make good, solid stuff. And I really enjoy the new crosshairs. I'm happy I got it. And I feel like the old one still has a purpose in collections. It's still a nice toy. It's still a nice figure. It's definitely one that's going to live on in my collection in the vehicle mode because it just looks nice. I like cars. I, you know, I think they're cool. I'm not like a big car guy. 
I can't even tell you the exact model. I'm pretty sure this is a Corvette Stingray, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> but I can't tell you the year, like whatever, XR, blah, blah, whatever. <laughs> I'm not a car guy. I'm a toy guy. So I, I like the car mode I, I, on both. I, I think it's a cool figure, and I think Crosshairs is a cool character. Again, I'd love to see what Legacy could do with him. I think it'd be kind of interesting seeing like one of these trench coat style figures in you know a more g1e style i wonder how they do it you know would they just abandon the trench coat you can't abandon the trench coat with crosshairs design that is crosshairs he has the trench coat so maybe they'd figure something out i i'd love to see it i'd love to see legacy like delve into g1 ifying and un like having a uniform design look for like some of these movie guys blackout would be sweet crosshairs would be sweet Age of Extinction Drift would be awesome. I'm trying to think what else. I'm, I'm turning around real quick to look. Uh, Legacy. I wouldn't mind like a Legacy like movie Grimlock. That'd be kind of cool. Just like maybe taking the Studio Series leader and like just making them all, you know, silver, gunmetal, gray, all worn. That like that look cool. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, ooh, Nitro Zeus in Legacy would be sweet. I love Nitro Zeus. Bone Crusher would be cool. Uh, like a more, like we kind of got barricades, sort of, with like Siege and Earthrise. That's almost like a Legacy barricade, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know, man. There's a lot. Ooh, the Fallen would be cool. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm sure you guys enjoy it, but I'll stop rambling. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Special shout out to channel members as well. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Alrighty, guys. There we go. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.